It is 9 o'clock. We'll call this meeting of the May 15th Trinity County Supervisors uh, to order. Uh, Mr. F Supervisor Fenley, would you leave us on? Oh, I wasn't quiet enough. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Okay, on to public comment. This time is for information from the public on matters not appearing on this agenda. All comments are limited to three minutes and must pertain to matters within the jurisdiction of this board. When addressing the board, please state your name for the record and address the board as a whole through the chair. No action or discussion will be conducted on matters not listed on the agenda. However, the chair may refer the subject matter to the appropriate department for follow-up or schedule a matter for a subsequent board agenda. Larry Winter from High Palm, and I would hope that the chair could indulge me with a little extra time, no more than 30 seconds or so. I want to follow up on a letter that I wrote, submitted to the Trinity Journal, and sent to all of you regarding Representative Hupman's visit to you. And I had a couple email responses from him that I think you should hear, and that's why it's going to be a little long. But this is all I have. Um, the letter that I submitted was in concern about the, his draft legislation that I felt was circumventing the Trinity Collaborative and he was coming directly to you without us having a chance to speak about it at the Collaborative. So his response was, he has two responses. First one is, I have no idea what you're talking about here. I've met with and included the Collaborative and everyone else, including the general public, in the most inclusive, transparent, open-ended process anyone could imagine for a piece of legislation like this. We put literally years in that process and you've been part of it. The fact that I'm having a few final meetings with supervisors to hopefully confirm their official support as elected officials before the, this is introduced is not some sinister attempt to go around anyone. It's what you do to show members of Congress that your bill has the support of local government. I think you're misreading this and I hope you won't undermine what we're all trying to do together by publishing an inaccurate, unfair, and unhelpful letter. I then sent him the email from Kelly Sheen, who's a facilitator for the Trinity Collaborative, showing how it was the subject matter was taken off of our agenda at the request of the draft bill proponents. And that's and then I heard about him coming here by accident. It wasn't published that he was coming to speak to you guys on this matter. And so after I sent him that email showing how it was taken off our agenda, he says, Larry. There's nothing more than I can say about this. Your disagreement is with the Board of Supervisors regarding how, when they choose to engage in a collaborative. You can 
take that up with them. It's their call, not mine. But please don't wrongly and unfairly accuse me of trying to circumvent the collaborative simply because I meet with the members of the board. And so because of this response, I did pull my letter out of the Trinity Journal because I believe him that he did not know or he was misled to believe that the collaborative has been a part of this project. And it hasn't been. Um, and so when he mentioned that I was a part of this inclusiveness, he's right in a sense. Jeff Morris brought the draft to me last summer and went through it while giving me maps and offering to answer questions. First off, the draft was well developed before there was any outreach to people like me. And secondly, it's not just about what I personally want. I've been wearing the hat of the High and Palm Fire Safe Council, which we started eight years ago, the hat of one of the original five-year members of the Trinity Collaborative, and as a local area advisor to the High and Palm community, to the incident command teams in 2015. I was also a member of the High and Palm Volunteer Fire Department and even acted as the interim chief for a year. My biggest concern is fire due to the conditions in our forest and how it affects our communities. How will wilderness designations with their limited acreage, 10, 15,000 acres, I think, affect our communities when it comes to fighting fires. One is downriver from the High Palm Valley, where prevailing winds blow towards High Palm. One encompasses the old minor fire on Hayfork Creek across from Bar 717, where the winds blew it all the way to the outskirts of Hayfork in 2008. One's upriver that could blow up into Indian Valley. I'm not necessarily coming out against these areas for wilderness, but we definitely need more discussion on this. The restoration area is a good concept also, but from what I've seen so far, there's really nothing new that we aren't already doing in, in, in regards to stewardship contracts and uh, prioritizing uh, fuel reduction. This just doesn't have any kind of funding stream appropriated through this bill, and that it seems like it's just the status quo of what we already have. I don't see really anything new besides just the designation. I'd like to hear more about it. We've just started talking about a master stewardship agreement between the Stanislaus Forest and National Forest in the Tuolumne County that is similar to the Weaverville Community Forest in the Trinity Collaborative, and that there is an added degree of local control. We can designate an area and have local control of that area. Regional Forester Randy Moore has recommended we look into doing something similar. Is this a better approach? Will it provide a more diverse funding stream that will allow us to get more work done? These are questions that I have that should be taken to the collaborative. And there is going to be a presentation in June to the collaborative concerning this draft bill. But we were told that there won't be a vote on it. Someone made that decision. And so I think that you, as the supervisors, owe it to our constituents, your constituents, to flesh this out so that we know the pros and cons and what the, the issues are going to be when, when it's presented to us. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. And if you want to give me a call sometime, we can sit down and meet and talk about the concerns since we sit on the, or not an isolated one. Is Larry aware of that? Larry, you know these two are the ad hoc for that subject matter. The wilderness ad hoc committee? Yeah. These two. So they have you. I've spoken mm -hmm. to Larry. Okay. I had last. Um, Do you have a presentation today on it? No. <laughs> well, we, we will have discussion today a little more. Discussion. And is that concerning the whole bill or just wilderness? The, the bill, yes. And will there be public hearings? Uh, on today, no. But on, is that the, the, the we, will, we will discuss that. Uh, okay. There, there is no bill yet. Right. The draft bill. So, but if you want to, I'm, I'm offering if you want to. I'll, I'll be more than glad to, to, to talk to me. Great. Thank you. Good morning. After the Civil Rights Act was passed, the banking industry, along with the government, instituted a policy of redlining. They drew red lines around black neighborhoods and refused to allow any economic development within those carved out or redlined areas. Now, 50 years later, the redlined towns and neighborhoods 
have never recovered. They are today's ghettos. Flint, Michigan, East St. Louis, etc. As a child, I lived in Dixie for a while in the South, and I never understood the hatred of white people towards black people, but it was real. It permeated our schools, our churches, and our neighborhoods. Hayfork has nothing but a bunch of hardworking, really beautiful people, but without any industry, we're drying up. If we continue, with the policy of redlining, our neighborhoods will permanently choke out of our, it will permanently choke out our future. The carve outs or redlining is social bigotry and nothing good will come of it. Without the cannabis industry in Hay Fork Valley, our schools will close, our stores will close, our restaurants will close, our medical clinic will close, the Roderick Center will close, etc. I love the drive up north on the three through Trinity Center to Coffee Creek. Beautiful forest, beautiful lake, beautiful homes. I understand that the people up there don't need the cannabis industry to keep fuel in their airplanes. But down in Hayford, we need it. We need dispensaries, we need manufacturing, we need distribution, all of it. Tourists will drive 90 minutes to come to Hayford Valley to buy some marijuana. And then they will fill up with gas, with the frontier fuel, and they will eat at the restaurants, and maybe even stay over at the Timberjack Lodge. Please, remove the hate work red line. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lisa Barrow. I'm here today to advocate for hate work. Oh. I am holding the seven statements I have written and presented to this board and to the Planning Commission over the last six months. Along with the proposal for the Hayfork Cottage carve-out, I sent the Cannabis Ad Hoc Committee in January. You know me. Today I want to address the Hayfork carve-out, not the Lewiston carve-out, not the Roof Lake carve-out, and not the Weaverville carve-out. Those communities can advocate for their own positions in this process. I live in Hayfork. Instead of continuing to support the redlined carve-out in Hayfork, which we all know will lead to more economic hardship, I urge this board to carefully consider creating clear opportunities inside the carve-out for nurseries, distribution, manufacturing, and most importantly, retail. Instead of empty storefronts and closed restaurants, we want open businesses and busy streets. Instead of crashing real estate prices and nasty abandoned properties, we want remodeled homes and a thriving downtown. Instead of, losing stu instead of drug pushing squatters, we want employed homeowners and renters. Instead of losing students and families in our school district, we want to build strong, healthy communities in Hayfork. Hayfork doesn't have a lake. We don't have a beautiful, historic downtown district. We do have an incredible brain trust of knowledge and experience in the cannabis industry. We do have several licensed cannabis sites in Hayfork Valley. Hayfork grows the most beautiful cannabis in the world. Stop the red line. Remove the carve out in Hayfork. Open the door to economic prosperity. The Hayfork Valley is uniquely positioned to become a first stop destination off of I-5 into the Emerald Triangle. If we build it, they will come. Please, let's grow Hayfork. Thank you. A little different subject, still community service. Some of you remember as the racetrack pain in the butt guy, always wanting something somewhere, somehow. Well, I'm back. <laughs> We're having a little dilemma this year. Our insurance got bumped up to a $5 million coverage requirement. We make our money to pay our bills from our events. Unfortunately, whenever there's a fire and they make a fire camp over there, we are not allowed to have events. We lost three last year, and our first event this year 
there's a fire camp going on, so we're in a pinch for money for our insurance. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any kind of a fund or anything that helps. We are a community service. We advertise, we promote Trinity County. We bring in people from all over. Our main event during the fair draws people from Nevada and Oregon for our big event. We put on events that give entertainment. I don't know if you've ever been to one of our fireworks shows. If you do, bring sunglasses, earplugs, and a book because you'll get broke bored during the thing. Anyway, if you guys have any funds, generate avenues where we can get some money up, Please look God in Thank you. Yes, um, Richard, could you talk to them and uh, see if there's anything that we can do to help? Are you going to be around to the meeting or at the break call? I'll hang out for a while, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, with that, we'll close public comment. We're on to the consent calendar. These items include routine non-controversial matters and will be acted upon by the board by one roll call motion. A member of the board, staff, or public may request an item to be pulled and considered separately. Supervisor Chadwick, we have anything today? Supervisor Morris? No, sir. Okay, I am going to pull 1.14. All right. Any staff? Members? Members of the public. All right. With that, I would entertain a motion. So moved. All right. Um, Supervisor Mines? Yes. Supervisor Morris? Yes. Supervisor Chadwick? Aye. Supervisor Fenley? Yes. Supervisor Gross? Aye. Okay. <laughs> Item 1.14 uh, Approve a budget adjustment in the Cannabis Eradication Department, Department 2280, increase in revenues by 32975 Services and supplies by 33,480, and decreasing salaries and benefits by 505. No impact to the general fund. Revenue from grant for eradication on marijuana on national forest lands. Um, I just pulled this. Thank you for being here today, Mary. I, I just pulled this to. I want people to understand. Make sure that this is not part of any of our legal cannabis. Or planning um, funds uh, because it did seem to me since it said cannabis eradication department it really isn't a de we don't have a department that's correct we don't have a separate department it's it's overtime it's primarily overtime and equipment and services that we need to eradicate marijuana on public lands. so I just brought that out to make sure the public understood Thank you. Uh, any questions from the public on this item? With that, I would entertain a motion. So moved. Okay, Bill and Morris. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to reports and announcements. Reports from department heads. Shaking heads. Oh, here comes one. I just want to announce that Caltrans be holding a public uh, workshop on Thursday, May 17th from 4 to 6.30 to discuss the Whiskey, um, Whiskey Creek Rehab Project. And essentially, that's going to be a project where they're going to be reconstructing 299 from the end of the uh, uh, Buckhorn Project into Chasta uh, <coughs> Town. So it's about 10 miles long. We're going to be putting in eight-foot shoulders. And, 
and repairing the pavement and uh, rehabilitating Bridge at Whiskey Town Creek. So it's pretty good size. Uh, construction slated for 2025. So it's it's as they as we had requested earlier, put some distance between Buckhorn and, and that project. Uh, and I did ask them last night to uh, have a work a workshop up here, and they said they would in about three weeks, so three or four weeks. So um, they are coming up, and uh, and we'll help. Um, on some other good news, uh, FHWA did agree to uh, come up and do a study uh, for the routes that go into the Trinity Alps Wilderness area. And so they're going to be looking at the county roads uh, between uh, the state highway and, and the wilderness area, county and forest service roads, and joint project we'll be doing it together. I talked about it a while ago that I'd like to do it, but FHWA actually agreed to do it. So. Uh, I'll be getting on the way and it'll help a position for a future uh, federal lands access dollars um, uh, as we uh, move along. And uh, concentrations will be given to Coffee Creek, uh, Canyon Creek, and uh, Denny Road. And it includes a, a large, extensive public outreach. So um, I want to try to avoid what kind of happened over at Pine Palm a while back when they're ready to go build the road, but the community. This time they'll at least be talking to everybody. And then uh, finally, uh, also on FHWA, there's some good news. Uh, they did agree to pick up about a third of our storm damaged roads uh, to reconstruct next summer using a, <coughs> using a blend of their money and uh, our money, which is subject to reimbursement from FEMA. But uh, the good news is pretty much all the South County roads are going to be fixed next summer when they go and do the receiving project. So that was a good news to hear. Any other department heads today? A uh, shake of notes. All right, report from the CAO. I mean, not through this time, although I have information as we go down the, the reports, I'll, I'll be uh, giving some information on the jail. Okay. Uh, and the product chair, um, could we maybe at the next meeting have a, a quick presentation from uh, Les and Letty and Ed on our emergency notification? We are, in essence, middle of, I mean, fire season has begun. Um, and I, I'm worried that, A, as board members, we don't have everything we need to know on the new emergency notification system, and more importantly, the public. So. So a presentation on the code red and yeah. how to sign up for it. I will volunteer them, yes. Thank okay. you. <laughs> All right. Reports from supervisors. Supervisor Mines, you have anything to add? Supervisor Helen? No, I've kind of traveled. Supervisor Chadwick. Well, um, it wasn't out of town, but uh, I think it's worth mentioning the, the presentation to Jesse Cox that we all went to, CAO and Huffman. It was a, a beautiful day, and the presentation was awesome, and it's just really wonderful to have someone of Jesse's caliber, so I just wanted to mention that. I did go on the wilderness tour. Um, there's a, I'm, I'm hoping that um, we can all maybe make it to the collaborative, and I guess that's a question, can we, if it's publicly noticed, can we make it? This time I'll ask counsel. <laughs> okay. Is, is this something you want to put together right now? Yeah. So, so the question that we would need in the future is that can the Board of the Supervisors meet with the collaborative? They only have two of us, like, Signed. Yes, you you can do anything outside as long as you agendize it. If you're right. more than two of you are present. Okay. Um, the problem is when you're on location, can you talk? And that becomes very problematic because. Right. So it, it, it can be done. It's just going to have to be done carefully. So maybe that's something that we can talk about. Yes. Um, 
I believe it's 15th of June. And so it has a cloud in the red light. So. Yeah. So then on the 7th was all chiefs uh, meeting, and uh, the 8th LPC and PAC, and then on the 10th was EMS down in Redding. There'll be a North State pre hospital conference on this Saturday in Redding. Uh, I was a little confused on the wilderness tour. Yeah, I went yeah. We're all over the place. Um, I didn't know there was such a thing. Yes. As a wilderness or a tour? Um, <laughs> as, you know. The bus was <laughs> picked up in Weaverville as well as in Hayport. Uh, we brought our own lunches. And um, it was about 14 to 15 of us in the bus and then another truck, two or three trucks. I live in the wilderness, so yeah. <laughs> I, I have okay. enough of it. I love it. All right. Well. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor Morris. Air quality out last Thursday. Right. And I have no out of county traffic. All right. On to the ad hoc committees. Um, anything new in the legislation? I have nothing to report. Nope. We'll know okay. more soon on that conversation, please. Okay, the commercial cannabis ordinance. Right. Uh, various parts are moving through the process, whether it's planning commission um, or here. We don't have anything today on today's agenda, of course. I think very soon we'll be getting hit by a bunch of things here. Yeah, so, right. So that they'll be moving forward. And then we also will be looking at the revisions to the cultivation ordinance that we talked about and promised earlier. Going to the planning commission sometime in the near future. Likely we'll fight for case some that won't need to go to the commission. All right, uh, new jail. Yes. Um, Chairman, the state has finally cleared us of our Title 15 and 24, which means they approved our, our operational plan. And on May 22nd in Sacramento, they'll be conducting their ground lease meeting. So if all goes well, sometime shortly after that, they'll give us the approval to go out to an RFP to find out if we can find a contractor that will build a facility for the amount of money that we've been allocated. And let us know if you need any more. <laughs> we'll send somebody else. <laughs> 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 yeah, my poor neighbor, he's going for sure. I'm going to get to Okay. Um, more questions? Yeah. All right. The COP refinancing, anything besides so what we have on the agenda? No, sir. Okay. The uh, budget development. Moving forward. Oh. And slicing and dicing. The uh, only thing that's changed is all the departments are scheduled for the meetings. Yeah. See, I look out there and I have the secret person. Who, yes, you did it right. All right, wilderness oversight. John, do you want to start? And actually, I think uh, since you're up for election, <laughs> you can lay it out on the line here. We met with uh, Jared Huffman, the Congressman Huffman, and what went on went on. I'm sorry, Keith. <laughs> okay, all right, so you want me to take the lead on this? Yeah, I don't think there's much going on with it. It's, it's not a bill yet. It's still trying to be a bill. Well, I would like to inform basically what happened to that. Congressman Huffman, I believe, met with all supervisors on this item. Um, uh, but since we were the wilderness oversight, we took the lead on, on issues that we had. We voiced uh, very strong concerns about what was going on and uh, asked for several changes and this to slow down have more input from the county 
and um, Congressman Huffman was very gracious and, and says that he's going to submit this to Congress soon. You have a lot more information than I would have given. But I, I agree. And Larry. And so uh, we don't. We will continue to work with uh, with congressmen and and see where we can go. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. I was there. Okay. All right. Have you? Um, this is what I was. Going. Yeah. I can't read your mind, John. Sorry. <laughs> yes, your question. Um, my question is, are, have you tasked a presentation with collaborative or somebody? Where is that coming out of? The ad hoc or? Well, uh, any issues that uh, I was not aware that they were going to receive a presentation. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure who's giving that presentation. I would say the presentations that I've seen are very weak and poor, really done. Um, is that more information that you would have said? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, and so I like it though. I, I'm not quite sure uh, where that presentation is. Okay, because I didn't know if you were sending questions no, down. No, we be... did not send questions. Okay. We have not. Uh, but you're right. So I assume that must be coming out of the congressman's staff. I don't think so. Um, so. You're on the collaborative, maybe you should. Uh, well, you can call them too, as an ad hoc. Well, you're required to ask for I mean, I didn't know if you guys required. specifically, as an ad hoc, had specific questions. For no, the collaborative we, we have out. not requested that to be sent. Okay. To so I will call. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, with that, on to County Matters. So, half an hour. Uh, these items include non-routine or controversial matters that are listed alphabetically by department. A member of the board or staff may request an item be heard out of order. Is there any request to appear out of order? Um, well, on 4.2 and 4.3, there is a clarification. So that doesn't matter, but I have order, not that I can clarify those before you get into on your slide. Okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and move into those as we okay. we'll do 4.1 first. Uh, Auditor Controller, approve a budget adjustment to the um, in the contributions to other funds departments, department uh, 1990, increasing transfers out by 18,000, approve a budget adjustment in the general fund contingency department. <coughs> Department 9901, decreasing appropriation for contingency by 18,000, approve a budget adjustment in Trinity Hospital Fund, increasing transfers in and decreasing revenues by 18,000, increase general fund appropriations of 18,000, current balance in contingency fund is $202,987. Mike Martin, auditor's office. Uh, the uh, interest rate that we've been receiving has been going up, and the, the negative cash balance in the hospital fund therefore gets negative interest. It that goes up more than we anticipated. And so that's what this transfer for is for, is to have that uh, deficiency to bring the hospital to keep it at a steady level. Okay. Any questions? All right, we'll open up to the public if there's any comments. All right, with that, we'll bring it back. Motion to approve as presented for the right one. Second. Okay, so we need a second. Any further discussion? Um, with that, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, on to uh, Clerk Recorder Assessor 4.2. Uh, approve 
Would you like to make comments before I read this, or do I have to read it first? Yeah. Um, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, what, I want, yeah, what I want to say on both 4.2 and 4.3 are the, the requests are, are correct and the reports are correct, but the ending balance will be different because in, in cases like this where we have multiple agencies uh, making this request, we send it in. We all assume that the beginning balance is the same, so when we do the subtraction, we have a different number, and then the auditor's office will balance it at the end, and it did get into this report uh, in time to change the balances, so we have the uh, correction in front of you, so the new ending balances are there. But again, the reports and the uh, requests are the same. Okay. And with that, I will read the item. Four point two: Approve a budget adjustment in the Elections Department, Department Six Fifty, increasing the interfund expense by forty nine thousand three hundred seventy eight, and approve a budget adjustment in the Contingency General Fund, Department Nine Nine Zero One, decreasing appropriation for contingency by um, forty nine thousand three hundred seventy eight, uh, increase General Fund appropriations of forty nine three seventy eight. Current balance in the Contingency Fund is one eighty four. 987 and approval of prior adjustments. And uh, Sheriff Rose, due to the appearance of 4.2 uh, and 4.3, which you have not read yet or, or opened up, I'm planning on recusing myself due to appearance from both items. Okay. See ya. We will come and get ya. Take your time. <laughs> So I'm Shanna White, I'm the County Clerk Recorder Assessor, um, and I for considering my request. I want to add that it's not easy to come ask for this money, um, for this many dollars at this time in the, in the budget year, and because, you know, in the, my eight years uh, being responsible for the budget for this office, I've always lived within the budget that's been approved uh, by, by the board. So, again, I want to thank you for your consideration, and if you have any questions. This is just covering some legal expenses. Uh, this is for the litigation fees right. for the uh, Penny family case, uh, the Weir versus White case. Uh, these are, you know, in my staff report, I put that you know we've spent um, thirty-nine thousand dollars is what I owe, and I put in an extra ten thousand for the months of May and June because these um, these fees that I've only been billed so far was was through April. So. Hopefully, we don't, you know, we don't get paid more than ten thousand dollars for the next two months. But if we do, then I'll, I'll be coming back and asking for more. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Open it up to the public for comments or questions. All right. We'll bring it back. Okay, we'll open back up. The mics are back on, thank you. Okay. Did you have any questions about it? Give us some Okay. I would entertain a motion. So moved. 
service and supplies by 35000 and approve a budget adjustment and contingency general fund department 9901 decreasing appropriations for contingency by 35000 increasing general fund appropriations of 35000 current balance in the contingency general fund is 135 pending approval of prior budget adjustments and then of course it was noted that this also had a revised amount Uh, so this budget adjustment is also similar to the last one, is to cover litigation costs for the Union versus Sedley case um, during budget development for 1718. We built in some um, budget appropriation for it, but it turns out that it was not enough. Um, we have estimated um, an additional five thousand. So I have current outstanding invoices through March of 2018, totaling $19,000. Um, and then I've estimated $5,000 per month for the month of April, May, and June. Um, my hopes is that those invoices will not come in above that, but if they do, then we'll be back to um, request additional funds. Um, and so far, um, the county has paid, spent over, just over $95,000 for this case. Um, alone. That includes the cost to our Board of Supervisors budget and to the Public Recorders budget, but this litigation has cost us $95,000 just in attorney's fees. That doesn't include additional staff time, which is, unfortunately, I don't have an easy way to um, put a number to. So the 35 would be on top of the 95, or that would be 95 total. I mean, I understand in our total expenses. The uh, 15 of the 35 would be on top of. Okay. So the invoices that I have, the 19,000 that are currently outstanding, are included in that 95, 95 but the estimated for April, May, and June okay. are not included in that. Okay. Any questions? She answered it. Thank you. All right. Any questions from or comments from the audience? Hi, my name is Veronica Kelly-Abbies, and I just have a question with the line item that it's going towards. But this is for litigation on the services and supplies. Is that is this for legal fees that it goes under, or is this for the the supplies for the office for answering the legal fee the legal litigation? I, I haven't had a chance to look at the line items. I apologize. Sorry, I work with budgets. I'm a little new to the Board of Supervisors and the county one. So, so I'm just wondering where the 35 would go. Your questions are, and then we will. Have to okay. Is that your only question? That's my only question. Is that the, 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 I'm just wondering which fund this is going to the services supplies. Is it more legal fees, or is it the support of the litigation of the staff? Okay. Is that clear? Sorry. Yes. So go ahead and answer. So these are for legal fees. Um, the way our budgets work is when we do budget adjustments, we budget at the income level, and our professional and specialized services are a portion of our services and supplies. But this is specific to the professional and specialized services line item, which is to cover the legal fees. Any other public? No. With that, we'll move it back. Any questions or entertain a motion? So moved. So second down here. All right. Any other discussion? No. Nope. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Same thing. All right. Would somebody please? I'll grab. Yeah. 
have supervisory battle. Mm -hmm. This is not at the coffee shop. Section 2.60.410A, authorize hiring a deputy planning director at range M252, step D, in the Department of Transportation, effective May 16, 2018, approximate cost and salary and benefits per month for a deputy planning director at A step is 9636 and a D step is $11,005. Good morning, Shelly Nelson, HR Director. I just wanted to provide a little history first. Um, well over a year ago, the county had attempted to recruit for a planning director or a senior planner. We were unsuccessful to the open recruitment. Um, so we had appointed with them an interim director during this period of time. Um, several weeks ago, we brought to you a deputy director job description to recruit. And we decided to run this um, in-house. We had one applicant in the interview. We feel the applicant has um, you know, extensive experience now. And the CAO and the director um, Tippett, CAO, sorry, Coons and Director Tippett, both felt that this individual who had been serving as our interim planning director for more than a year brings extensive experience now and it would be appropriate to recognize what they have provided in developing um, the Canvas division. And they are requesting that you consider offering this position at these steps. Any other okay. Any questions? All right. Uh, out to the public. Any comments? All right. We will bring it back. Chair, move to approve 4.4 as presented. Yeah. Okay. Second. Yeah. Check with second. All right. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Sean. All right. On to transportation 4.5, approve a budget adjust adjustment in the surveyor department, Nothing department yet. 1910, increasing service and supplies by 20,000. And dig decreasing revenues by 15 and approve a budget adjustment in the contingency general fund department 9901, decreasing appropriations for contingency by 35,000, increasing general funds appropriation of 20,000. Current balance in the contingency is 10609, pending approval of prior budget adjustments. Mr. Tim. Um, this is something we talked about uh, a bit in the past is that we run the survey department uh, where our fees that we collect are uh, lower than the product that we provide. And part of that reason is that the county has had the desire to make sure that property owners uh, uh, do participate in hiring surveyors and getting the work done so that we have uh, good, dis good descriptive property lines throughout the county. So we have prices for uh, corner records, lot line adjustments, and different activities that are below what it actually takes to do it. And then it's also some of these, some of this work is mandated by the state to be done at certain prices, which is also, once again, below what it costs to do. Um, so it has been a standard for the probably last three or four years that at the end we have to come back and request a budget adjustment. We do project out the work and we do try to accommodate some of this discrepancy, but sometimes it's a little bit uh, more than we expect, particularly this year. Uh, we had Caltrans come with a bunch of uh, records and surveys on 299 at different locations, and, and we're required to do those for at no cost, so um, that's the cost that we absorb. And then also, uh, uh, lot nine adjustments um, are one that we have a large discrepancy in the fee, and we've seen with Canvas, a lot of 
there's been a lot of adjusting to <coughs> make properties work, and so we've had a lot of light in adjustments, and so that's caused our cost to Delta to be um, uh, where it is right now. So with that, I can answer any questions. Questions? No. Well, I'll just kind of go off what Rick said. Okay. Um, so Rick, would you say you certainly have an increase in this work since last year? I, I can't tell. Yes. Okay. And um, you say some of it's the lot line adjustments related to cannabis. Yes. And are some of those fees offsetting any of this? Um, well, I apply for that specific. The, you know what the purpose is. Yeah. But the official description is just lot line adjustments. And they're paying a fee, though. Yeah, they, they pay the standard survey fee. Okay. I don't have a survey or a fee for lot line adjustment cannabis. For no, I wouldn't expect you to. I just want to make sure, are those? Are you feeling those fees are covering no, the cost? No. So that, that's a separate issue we yes. might need to look at down the road Yes. in terms of lot line adjustments in general. Yes, so candidly, the uh, survey uh, department Fees do need adjusting, but also, again, back to, it's a tough one to adjust because you want to encourage people to do what's right and do, um, particularly when it comes to corner records. So corner records are a good example. Um, you really want to encourage surveyors to set corner mm -hmm. corners when they can, and to bring in the corner record is, you know, right now it's ten dollars, but it actually runs about. 150, 200 process. But most owners, if you tell them it's 100 or 200 dollars and they don't need it, they're just going to say, eh, yeah, yeah, don't forget it. And the problem is, is then we get left with a, uh, a less dense um, property network of, of, you know, establishing and letting people know where our property lines are. So that's why we've historically been uh, kind of supplementing the survey. Value, my item finally came up. Um, so, will you at some point reevaluate the fee for lot line adjustments? Yes, we, we can. We will the next week. Just because we're out. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Any questions from the public on this item? Comments? All right. We'll bring it back. So, Chadwick will be the first. Second. Second. All right. All those signify by all those voting aye signify by saying aye. Aye. I totally lost this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. And with that, we have a public hearing and oh, we have an addendum. Thank eh? you. So proud of getting done before ten. All right, Treasurer, Treasurer Tax Collector approve an agreement with Jones Hall to provide a bond council service for the refinance of the 2005 certificates of participation subject to routing as to form and content. Potential total savings of approximately half a million dollars once refinance for the following expenses being taken off the top. Um, 32500 for bond council expenses. Good morning, Carrie McBrayer, Treasurer Tax Collector. Um, I apologize for having to come back to you again so soon on the same topic. Um, we ran into a bit of an issue with um, the um, company that we selected for our bond council. Um, they basically we went back and forth for um, weeks and even months on the, uh, they basically dissected our, our contract and when it came down to it, we finally um, sent them our um, completed draft. They decided that they would not be willing to sign our indemnification. And when I spoke with council, they decided that um, that, that would leave the county open for liability. And so we opted to move forward with um, our second choice. And so that would be, that's why you have before you the um, Jones Hall contract. Okay. And that's why we're I'm here today, so that, um, and we've spoken with Jones Hall, and they are, in fact, willing to sign our identification portion of the, the contract. So um, that's why we're here today, so we can move forward with that. Okay. Any 
questions? Okay, with that, any public comment? Back to the board. Any discussion or motion? Nope. You make a motion to approve addendum A uh, from the Treasury Tax Collector as presented. Second. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Now, uh, we have a hearing at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll take Make it ten oh two and take eight minutes.